Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. It's been a while since I've showed you an IBM personal computer, but here we have one, a gorgeous IBM 5170 or IBM personal computer AT, the 286 offering from IBM. Now this is a pretty much stock machine featuring the five and a quarter inch floppy drive. Next to it, we will find a 30 megabyte hard drive we have the very recognizable case we have the ibm personal computer at badge as well as a badge for the company which was using it other than that we have a simple key lock we have two leds on the case the five and a quarter inch floppy drive and an empty drive bay underneath for an additional floppy now from this angle the computer seems to be in pretty good shape but as we move to the back, we start to see something unfolding here. So on the edge of the case, we already see some markings of battery leakage. And also on the back of the PC, where we have the expansion cards, we see a lot of work cut out for us. The seller did advertise the computer with pictures clearly showing the damage in this area here. So I was aware of it but it was offered very cheap so i couldn't resist so let's open it up and see what we have inside and inside it becomes very clear just what type of damage we are dealing with the battery has wreaked all kinds of havoc here on the expansion cards they are pretty much all covered with gunk from this battery here Probably the PC has been sitting on its sides, stored away somewhere. And the five expansion cards that we have here are pretty severely impacted. So we'll start by trying to remove them so that we can take a closer look at the actual damage. So I'm going to start by removing these flat cables here from the MFM and floppy drive controller. So this is the first card that we will be removing. And obviously because of the battery leakage, the corrosion, which is put on the bracket of the expansion card, we do need to wiggle it a little bit to get it out. And here we have the 16-bit MFM controller card, where you can clearly see the corrosion on the bracket of the PCB. So this will need either a good cleaning or a complete replacement, depending on the damage that we will assess afterwards. Moving on to the next card. Let's see if we can remove that one. Again, it's really stuck to the chassis of the computer, but we are able to get it out. And this is a serial parallel card uh, from IBM. Again, lots of corrosion here on the serial connector. Not really sure if we are going to be able to clean this, but we'll take a look afterwards. Here we have a very heavily corroded card so I'm hoping that I will be able to get it off in one piece so let's see yeah so this one is really stuck to the chassis so this is going to be very difficult to remove so I'm just going to leave it there for now and continue with the other ones so even this one, which appears to be a memory expansion card, is very stuck, but eventually it does come out. So yeah, all of the expansion cards themselves are in pretty decent shape, but obviously there is some corrosion which has gone over to the edge of the card. Now, normally there aren't any critical components there, so we should be able to clean that, but the brackets themselves will probably need replacement. So here we have a small card, which is a, a graphics card. So this is going to be an MDA Hercules card, I suppose, because it also has the parallel port. So yeah, minor damage here on the bracket. Hopefully this should come off relatively easily, but we'll probably put in a VGA card in this machine. And now this one, which is yeah, corroded onto the case so we're going to be using some force to get it off and as we pull it out of the expansion slot the bracket basically just disintegrated before my eyes now luckily i don't really need this card as this was used to hook up an external 
tape drive or something which I don't have but here you can see the remainder of the bracket still attached to the chassis of the case so yeah really nasty stuff and so yeah here we can see the actual culprit of it all which is this battery which is hooked up to the main board that just started leaking uh, all over the place because I think the computer was stored on its side for most of the time and the yeah, battery just started leaking and spilled its guts all over the uh, expansion cards. Now the rest of the computer does need a thorough cleaning so I'm going to be removing every single part that can be removed from this case starting with this MFM hard drive here which is a full height uh, five and a quarter inch uh, MFM hard drive. I think these computers came with either 20 megs or 30 megs uh, hard drives. This is mounted on a rail system that can be pulled out relatively easily so after removing the cables from the hard drive it should just slide on right out. So yeah, a really big hard drive from Seagate, 30 megabytes. Yeah. Hoping that this one will still work. So this is the ST4038 MFM hard drive, 30 megabytes. Moving on to the floppy drive, where it's again a matter of removing all of the cable, including this little ground cable here, which is hooked up to the chassis. And before we can slide it out, we need to remove a couple of screws here at the front. So we have these little standoffs or placeholders here that kind of pull the floppy drive into its cage. So after removing those, we can simply pull out the floppy drive. So here we go, the 1.2 megabyte floppy drive. Now focusing on the main board, let's disconnect the power supply and the main board is held in place with these two screws here. So let's go ahead and remove those. We have some connectors here for the LEDs on the case, the PC speaker and the key lock. So we'll go ahead and remove those. And with all of that removed, we can simply slide the main board out of the case like so. Now the main board is covered in dust, but the observant viewer will no doubt see the Intel 286 8 megahertz CPU at the center. And you can clearly see that the PC has been sitting still for quite a while. Now moving on to the power supply, we will go ahead and remove that as well. Simply unscrewing four screws and then it slides out. There are still some slot covers that we need to remove and I was able to remove one of them very easily but there was one where the screw was completely stuck so I couldn't get it off with a normal screwdriver so so I left it at that for now because I'm going to take the case outside to do a proper cleaning. But first I'm going to remove this front plate here which contains the two LEDs and the key lock. And of course we'll be removing the PC speaker also as we don't want to have that still inside the case when we do a proper cleaning of it. Now on the case we also have these ground wires which are hooked up to the floppy drive and the hard drive so we'll go ahead and remove those as well. We have one more additional cover on the front of the case right here. So let's remove that. And here we can also see the IBM model number, which is the 5170 coming from Belgium, as indicated by BE. There were some markings on the case, not really sure what these were. But now we've removed all of the components from the PC. So we have all the expansion cards here, the main board, the hard drive, floppy drive, speaker, some of the brackets from the case. So let's see what works, what doesn't, and what we need to do to fix it up. And we'll start by taking a look at the power supply, which I have hooked up to the hard drive right here. 
So let's flip the switch. Now we can hear the hard drive spinning, which is a good thing and it's not producing any funky sounds. So hopefully the hard drive should be in an okay state, but we'll see that in a while. Because for now, the main thing that I wanna do is check the voltage rails on the power supply. So with some load attached to the power supply, I'm gonna take the Molex connector here and put in my probes on the five volt rail. And this should produce a nice five volts which it kind of does, 5.5, a little bit off, but nothing to worry about. Now let's check the 12 volt line. Now that's a bit low, 10.8, but shouldn't cause any issues. So let's turn off the power supply and just listen to this. Yep, that's the sound of a 30 megabyte MFM hard drive from 35 years old shutting down. Now the next thing that I wanted to do was hook up the main board to the power supply. I've added a VGA card so that I can hook it up to my LCD monitor. And Lord and behold, we see the computer booting. We see a memory count. There are a couple of errors, obviously, as I don't have any floppy drives or hard drives attached to the system. The system settings are also not present because there's no battery attached. But other than that, the system does appear to work, which is excellent news. Now, moving back to the case where we have this single bracket, which doesn't want to come off because the screw here is completely corroded down into the chassis of the case so i tried using vinegar to to remove some of the corrosion uh, i should have used the steel brush here perhaps it would have been easier but i didn't have one at hand so for the moment i just decided to leave this one as is and just uh, clean the case so that i can uh, move forward so I hosed everything down. It was a reasonably sunny day, so I just left the case out to dry for a little bit, take a little break, and then continue on working on this computer. Now the case cleaned up very well, except for the backside here, which still has a lot of corrosion, which we will tackle at a later stage. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time slash sunlight anymore to clean and dry the power supply. So I'm just going to hook it up as is. And the same goes for the main board. I will be cleaning it properly, but that will be for a next video. So I've decided to use a VGA card for this build as I think it's just a lot more convenient to hook up a VGA monitor. And despite the fact that it came with an MDA card, I think it's suffice to say that a lot of these 286 systems came with a VGA card. Next up is the PC speaker. So it's always handy to have a PC speaker to have some audible feedback when something goes wrong. So we're just going to hook that up to the case as well and attach it to the designated pins on the main board. So let's hook up the power supply cables onto the main board, black on black as always. Because what I really was interested in was to see if this MFM hard drive would still work. I mean, just look at this thing. This has to be one of the biggest hard drives I've ever seen. And the bad sector list appears to be completely empty. So yeah, I have really high hopes that this hard drive will still work. But before we can conclude on that, we need to hook it up to our MFM controller. And that one was in pretty bad shape. Now, as far as I can tell, the PCB itself looks fine. I didn't see anything wrong with it. It's just on this bracket here where we had lots of corrosion on the edge of the PCB a little bit, but hopefully it shouldn't be that bad. So let's start by just removing the bracket from the PCB. Yeah, so we'll need to see if this is still salvageable or if we need to look for a replacement piece or do some 3D printing for this one. 
But let's just add our MFM controller card onto the main board. Any free 16-bit ISA slot will do. So let's add our floppy drive back into the case, as well as the hard drive. Hook up the flat cables to the floppy drive and the hard drive and add the cables to our MFM controller card. Let's see what she does. And nothing. We heard some clicking on the hard drive, but that was it. Now a good practice is always to remove the last component you added before everything went wrong. And as you can see here, the PC does start with the MFM controller card removed. So the problem is definitely somewhere within the MFM controller card. But unfortunately, that's all the time I have for now. Now the fact that we were able to get from this to this and getting the PC to boot is already a small victory. So please hit that subscribe button and notification bell if you're interested on how I will be further cleaning this PC, cleaning up the expansion cards that came with it, doing some diagnostics and repairs, all in an effort to get the machine up and running again and getting her to look like this. Until next time, see you guys later, bye bye.